it will go into my account. I think it's recording. This. Okay, so welcome uh, to the UNCG Lib University Libraries Research and Application Webinar Series. Uh, we've been doing this now, I think, a couple of years. In this series, different librarians cover topics on UNCG Libraries resources and research tools. There are 30 minute webinars recorded in um, Zoom. This is a pilot that UNCG is doing. So I give each host the option of doing it in Zoom or WebEx. Um, and then they're put on YouTube where that is where we close caption them. Uh, so I am, and then we put them on our guide, which I'm dropping into the chat right now. So um, just to cover a couple logistical things, uh, this is, Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon uh, near your name or at the bottom of left of your screen. Uh, you can turn it on again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenter. But throughout the webinar, if you have a question, you can just put it in chat and I will monitor them for Maggie and uh, present them to her when the opportunity arises. So if there's technical issues, you can email me. I'm here uh, that I can try to help you, but also remember that this is being recorded. So um, worst case scenario, we can also get you a recording after the fact. So please let me know if you have any questions about any of the logistical stuff. Uh, but as people are thinking of them, I'm gonna introduce our presenter. Uh, today, this session is being hosted by UNCG Libraries Humanities Librarian Maggie Murphy. And she's gonna be presenting on this title on the screen, Managing Archival Research Photographs with Tropy. So, you ready to go, Maggie? Yes. Okay, um, so hello everyone. Uh, like Sam said, I'm Maggie Murphy. Um, so, I have a really long official title, uh, which is First Year Writing Visual Art and Humanities Librarian. Um, there are a couple of humanities librarians, um, of which I am one, uh, and I work with uh, history, philosophy, and religious studies in the humanities. Um, and there's my contact information. I know that I have some colleagues here, uh, uh, and also um, someone else joining us from outside the libraries. Uh, if you could tell me in the chat um, if you have any experience using Tropy uh, or um, any other uh, sort of management platforms for research photographs. Nope, <laughs> says Sam. <laughs> Great. No, okay. Okay, so everyone says no. Well, so Tropy is a relatively new um, platform uh, that um, was developed by uh, the Roy Rosenvig. Uh, Center for History and New Media, um, but uh, it's developed to address a specific problem um, in humanities research uh, conducted in archives, which is that um, most historians uh, and other humanists doing archival research take a lot of photos. Um, so in January at uh, AHA 2020, Ian Milligan, um, who is an associate professor of history at the University of Waterloo, presented um, the results of a survey that he conducted. Uh, he had 253 respondents, all Canadian historians, um, and uh, over 50% of them took more than 1,000 photos uh, for their last um, project uh, that involved archival research, and just about 40% of them took more than 2,000 photos. Um, and so uh, Milligan said during the presentation, we're all digital historians now. Most people are dealing with a lot of uh, digital photographs um, that is part of their research process, uh, photographs that they are taking, and you need a sort of comprehensive, systematic way um, to deal with that kind of data. Um, and so Milligan went further and summarized that the, the state of things in archival research um, is good and bad and uh, just is what it is in that um, researchers are um, taking shorter research uh, trips. So instead of spending a week or two overseas in an archive, uh, you might get funded for a couple of days. Um, 
it saves time, time away from classes, time away from family, et cetera. Um, so that's nice that it's shorter amount of time, you're not spending as much money, um, but you get in, you take a bunch of photos and you get out. Um, it also uh, is nice because you are working from digital surrogates rather than just relying on your notes. Um, so when you leave the archive, you actually have uh, whether they are good or bad photographs, um, you have some kind of digital surrogate to work from the actual documents themselves um, and not just your notes about them. Um, however, a lot of historians um, in the survey uh, voiced a concern about how this process of being in the archive, taking a bunch of photos, um, and then leaving is actually changing their research process. Um, take photographs and thinking are sort of disconnected uh, states rather than having like a sort of iterative research thinking analysis um, on site with the materials. And then a lot of people have questions about what to photograph, how many to take, um, and that's not necessarily something that as a librarian I can address, um, but I do think that Trophy makes it manageable to have a lot of photographs and to organize them in a more systematic way. Um, and so that's what we will be addressing today. Um, so Trophy, like I said, is um, a research photo management platform. Uh, and it's for organizing photos, describing them, um, sharing uh, information uh, that you record about them. Um, so Trophy is a desktop software platform. It's free and open source um, and can be downloaded for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, Unlike uh, Zotero, which was developed by the same people, um, you do not make an account and there is no cloud access. So Trophy lives on your device. Um, your photos stay on the device. Uh, there's no syncing. There's no exporting your photos through Trophy. Um, the basic workflow is to import your photos, then you can edit them in various ways. Uh, not sophisticated editing, but you can um, collocate photos into items, um, you can rotate them, uh, you can crop them, basic editing. Um, then you describe them uh, by applying metadata, um, by uh, using the notes field where you can record analytical notes or transcriptions. Um, you can organize your photographs into lists or your items into lists, and you can also share by exporting your metadata um, or uh, export into various platforms like Omeka um, for creating a uh, exhibit or gallery of your work. Um, so Trophy uh, supports virtually all image file formats. Um, however, it does not support uh, HEIC, which is the native iPhone format um, that uh, Apple has started using with iOS 11. Um, and so uh, earlier, I noticed that when I tried to export photographs I had taken from my phone, um, from my phone directly using the Google Drive app into Google Drive, all of them uh, showed up as HEIC, and I couldn't even turn them into JPEGs using Photoshop. Um, so I had to uh, mount my phone as a drive on my computer and copy the files off that way. Uh, so HEIC, again, is a new sort of file type. Um, it's great because they take up smaller space on your phone, which is why Apple is using it. Um, but it still seems like the systems for dealing with it. Um, and a lot of people have iPhones, uh, and that's where a lot of people take their photos is with their phone. Um, so be aware that you can't import, uh, at least the way I did, by uploading from my phone to the cloud uh, and then trying to download them from the cloud on my desktop. Um, you may end up with a weird file type that way. Any questions so far? I'm going to pause here because I feel like I'm talking fast. Uh, if you have questions at any point, I am also glancing over at the chat uh, now and again. You may be typing a question, but I'm going to move to the next slide and I will stop if anyone does. Okay, good so far. Thanks, Paul. Um, so just to be clear, uh, Tropy is not photo editing software. Like I said, there are some basic uh, editing capabilities, um, but there's nothing sophisticated in there. If you want to edit your photos, uh, you should use a dedicated photo editing software 
like Photoshop um, or any of the open source alternatives. Uh, Tropy is also not a citation manager. So it's not for managing um, metadata about uh, collections or items more broadly and certainly not secondary sources. Um, it, the, it doesn't export citations uh, in any kind of style either from the metadata that you enter. Um, so Zotero is a citation manager, Tropy is not one. Um, Tropy is also not a platform for writing up your research. There's no uh, sort of manuscript authoring function uh, like Scrivener or Devon um, or you know <laughs> Google Docs for that matter. Um, you can uh, write and export notes, um, but there's no way to move from your photos and notes to a manuscript in Tropy. Um, and then finally, it's not a platform for presenting your research online. Uh, like I said, you um, are not exporting your photos, metadata, and notes when you export from Trophy, um, except that you can do it into Omeka, which is a content management platform uh, for presenting research. Um, but that's something that you have to configure uh, and use Omeka to do. So Trophy um, does not have like a sort of native visualization component to it. Um, however, uh, Tropy, Omeka, and Zotero, again, were all made by the same people, um, the Center for New Media and History. Um, and so uh, those things do sort of work similarly and work well together, um, but they all have different functions. And that's why they are three different uh, platforms. Okay. Um, and so just from the Tropy documentation, again, this is the sort of rhetoric that they're sharing with researchers. Take control of your research photos with Tropy, um, a tool that shortens the path from finding sources to writing about them. Spend more time using your research photos and less time searching for them. Um, so a lot of folks will just import photos into a folder, maybe label the folder with some information. Uh, the photos probably stay with uh, whatever um, automatic naming convention your phone or uh, camera applies, and then you have to sort of rely on your memory of what order uh, you, um, you know, took the photos in or, you know, some other kind of uh, memory device to help navigate through them. So Tropy uh, is there to make use of your photos. That's the point. Um, so to get started with Tropy, uh, you have to download and install it from tropy.org. Um, so tropy.org uh, will automatically um, uh, recognize what platform you're on, what um, operating system, and uh, but you, if for some reason, want to download it a different one, you also have that choice. Um, so you download and install Tropy, which is really easy. Um, you do not have to make an account, like I mentioned. Um, so that's different from Zotero if anyone is a Zotero user. Uh, and then the first step is to name your first project. That's what you're prompted to do as soon as you download it. Um, so the interface looks like this. Uh, and so you're prompted to name your first project. Uh, I named mine Anna Gove um, for the uh, doctor uh, who's uh, correspondence um, I have photographs of, uh, and uh, this is the basic setup here. Um, to import, you can go to File Import, uh, and you can find through your file tree the files that you want to import. So from Tropy Demo um, here, I have all of these beautiful files, uh, and I'm going to open and import them all. Um, two of them I have already imported, and so it does let me know uh, that I already have these, and I'm going to skip those two, and it will import the rest. So while it's working on that, um, the basic uh, sort of function or uh, organization, um, the basic unit in Tropy is an item. Hmm, my slides aren't loading. There we go. Um, so you import your photos, and then you create items. Items can be made from single photographs or groups. So you might have multiple photographs of something that you want to call a single item, like a letter. Um, and so once we have our photographs loaded into Tropy, um, you can look at them in list view. 
or uh, in a grid view. Um, and you can see here uh, what my item that I have here um, from, let's see, uh, down here at the bottom consists of two photos. Um, I'm calling it the Georgetown letter. Uh, and I edit, uh, edit, entered some basic metadata about it. Um, so it consists of this photo uh, and this photo. Um, and so if I want to combine uh, multiple photographs into a single item, um, let's say these two, uh, I can highlight them, right click, uh, merge selected items, um, and now these two photos belong to a new item. Um, you can choose a metadata template here. Uh, you want to give your item a title. Um, I can't remember what this one is. It's a letter from Southern Bell. So I'll just call this Southern Bell for now. Uh, and that's the basic workflow so far. You import your photos and create items. Um, so like I just said, the project view um, on the left, uh, you, we haven't made lists yet, but on the left, um, you have the name of your project. Uh, in the center, um, you have your items. Uh, and then on the right, there's the metadata pane. Um, when multiple photos are part of a single item, the photo will be listed here with their original file name. And then you can add notes um, to your files if you want. And then there's a separate uh, tags tab here in the metadata pane. Um, we also have the item view. Uh, and so in the item view, the metadata pane moves towards the left. Um, again, you have multiple photos uh, here if you do have multiple photos. Um, and you can move between a list and grid view for your photos um, that the item uh, comprises. Um, and then any notes you have here, you can have multiple notes for the same item. Uh, and then there are some um, photo editing tools here, not very many, uh, such as adjusting brightness, contrast, um, you can rotate, it got cut off a little bit, um, but you can also rotate, um, sorry, I just knocked over my coffee. Um, so once you have uh, your photos imported um, and you have set up your items, um, you want to add or edit your metadata. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, I go back to my view here. Um, under metadata, there are some basic templates. So um, the Dublin Core template uses uh, the Dublin Core, um, I can't think of the term all of a sudden, elements, uh, of which there are, I think, 12. Someone in technical services listening to this uh, might be printing right now. Um, and so uh, these have sort of defined the fields have defined meaning. Um, some of them uh, have recommended vocabularies to pull from. Um, and then there's one for correspondence specifically under tropes, uh, and then tropy generic. Um, and you can also, uh, under um, your preferences, uh, where is it? Or maybe, sorry, I'm getting a little lost since it's been a minute since I've practice this webinar. Oh, under help. Um, you can uh, uh, define different metadata templates if you want to. So if you want to create your own customized template, you can do that as well. Um, and uh, then you can also tag items. And so um, tagging uh, is a way to organize items thematically, um, chronologically, by topic um, across different lists um, and potentially even different projects. Uh, and so tags also allow you to use colors if you want. Um, and so I have this uh, 1917 tag here, uh, which I've tagged this. I've also tagged Massachusetts. Um, so you can tag, you know, uh, across different item types with a particular year, et cetera. Everyone understands tagging. Um, and then uh, you can also create notes, as I mentioned. And so Trophy does not have an automatic transcription, um, OCR, 
uh, element built into it. I think that is something the developers are working on and that would make it um, like far and away uh, a much more useful platform. But as it stands, you can use the notes field to transcribe um, your documents if you want uh, the documents to be full text searchable. Um, so you can zoom in, you can rotate, um, you can crop, uh, you can create um, selections or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Details uh, to zoom in on. Um, to call out parts of the image. Uh, and so your notes can go here. Um, and then uh, you can organize items into lists. Um, lists can also be nested. Um, so uh, from the uh, project view under file, new, uh, list, um, this is where we would create a list like correspondence and then uh, I might create one um, from Anna and then I can nest it within correspondence if it will let me um, and so uh, those are the basic functions um, so once you have organized uh, your photos. Um, you have, you can create notes optionally, you can optionally tag them, um, you want to describe your items, you can organize them in lists, and then you can search across all of those different functions. Um, there are also uh, some advanced functions that the Trophy documentation, which I have linked to in my slides, um, and then at the end I give you the URL. Um, so this is a very step-by-step -step, um, introduction to setting up Tropy. Um, they get into uh, here also um, the rights to archival materials. Um, so there may be things in archives, uh, you know, that just because you have taken a photo of it does not mean that the copyright uh, transfers to you. Um, and that is part of the reason why uh, Tropy does not um, automatically provide cloud storage or ways to share photographs um, online because they don't want to get into copyright issues. Um, if you are unfamiliar with metadata um, and describing items using uh, standardized fields, um, then there's an introduction to that here. Uh, and so, like I said, one of the things that you can do, um, there are some vocabularies that are uh, already in Trophy when you install it, but you can add more vocabularies. Um, and so they have to be imported uh, using a TTL or N3 file format. Um, so these are the ones uh, that Trophy comes with. But for example, um, if you are doing research uh, on art and you wanted to bring in uh, the Getty vocabulary, uh, program ontology, um, then you would be able to uh, bring this in uh, to Trophy. Um, also in the documentation, sorry, I'm losing my slides here, uh, they have the keyboard shortcuts. So if you uh, intend to become a, an expedient researcher using Trophy, you probably want to learn the keyboard shortcuts, um, and so they have these down here, uh, a whole list of them, um, mostly involving control uh, or command on a Mac, shift, and then a letter, um, although some of them don't have shift. Uh, so for creating new projects, new items, opening, importing, closing, uh, merging items is probably the one that you would use the most um, for uh, keyboard shortcuts. So if I go back to my project and I want to merge these multiple ones, I'm selecting them by holding down control uh, and then it was control shift M I believe. Was it control shift M? Hmm. Great. It says it is. 
but I don't see an item happening. Well, I'm not sure why that's not working. Something to investigate on my own time, uh, but that's what you would use to merge different items together. Um, and then lastly, you can export from Trophy, like I mentioned. So you're not exporting a file that brings your photos with it. Um, however, you can export your metadata and notes into JSON. Um, and actually your Trophy projects um, live, uh, JSON, I hate saying it that way, I'm sorry. Um, but they live as files. Um, uh, it's a TPY file, um, and so you uh, need to make sure that they don't get deleted from your computer, by the way. Um, they live uh, with the Trophy um, application in the application folder. Uh, so um, that will erase your project if you do that. Uh, and so you can export. Um, there's various different options. Um, and so you're exporting your metadata and notes, not the photos. Um, your photos still exist outside of Trophy. Um, importing photos into Trophy only links to your photos. Uh, so if you delete your photos um, from your computer, then they will also not be in Trophy anymore. Uh, and you can also export to Omeka S. Um, so Omeka S, uh, like I said, if you are unfamiliar with it, um, Omeka is a content management platform um, for uh, web exhibits and other types of research, visualization. Um, Omeka.net is the hosted version um, and it runs Omeka Classic. Omeka S um, is uh, for much more um, complicated, like multi uh, project collections um, at UNCG. I think we have a test instance running in Eret right now. Um, and uh, so you can build beautiful, robust um, exhibits. Uh, we take a tour. No, we don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, so you can uh, have items, have the photos associated, design and build exhibits, etc. And so the nice thing about Trophy is that um, it will uh, export your photos and your metadata together so that you don't have to um, catalog them again in uh, Omeka. Uh, and so that is, we're at a half an hour. That is the basics of what I have for all of you. Um, so Tropy has a, a pretty limited scope as to what it is for. Um, and so it is a, meant to address the problem um, that uh, of, of historians and other uh, humanities researchers taking a bunch of research photos. Um, and so even if you are very organized, uh, your metadata is probably separate from your photos, unless you have copies of photos in an Excel spreadsheet where you're also trying to um, catalog them. Uh, there's kind of no other efficient way um, to capture the amount of information about a specific photo or to combine photos into items without putting them into PDFs or something like that. Um, and so, it's to deal with this problem. Um, but again, it has a really limited scope. It's not for editing your photos if you need to do um, really complicated editing. It's not for managing secondary uh, source citations. Um, it's not for writing up your research. And it's not for presenting it online. Uh, it's really easy to get started. Um, you download, install, name your first project, start importing your photos. Um, I find it to be pretty intuitive. Uh, and they have really great documentation. Um, you can have multiple projects open at the same time. Uh, your items um, can live in multiple lists, uh, so they don't have to be mutually exclusive lists. Um, you can have multiple notes per item, uh, multiple tags, um, tags across lists. Uh, you can adjust your photos. You, if there's anything that needs to be transcribed, you can put it in a notes field. Um, and then there are various ways to import different vocabularies and export your research. Uh, so 
the documentation is at docs.trophy.org um, and it is really easy to use. Uh, I use some photographs from the Dr. Anna Maria Gove papers here in uh, our Martha Blakeney Hodges special collections in the University Archives. Um, and I also referenced uh, this talk that Ian Milligan gave at the American Historical Association annual meeting in January 2020. Um, and if you are interested, uh, there's a lot more in the presentation than what I cited. Um, and everything uh, should be accessible through my slides as well. Um, and I'll send those to Sam. She can send those to everyone who registered, all two of you. Um, so any questions about Tropy, using Tropy? I'm not sure why the keyboard shortcut isn't working. Uh, it could be that there was an update that threw off the keyboard shortcuts. Um, but I don't want to just sit here and quietly fiddle with it. Okay, if the, fernal, the photos are an external drive, can the Trophy project be saved to that drive at well? Um, yes, it can. Um, so that's why it is a uh, separate um, file, the Trophy project. And let me see if I can, this PC, find, it's gonna take forever to search. Um, I guess I could have just gone into applications. Uh, but yes, you can move the Tropy file into your external drive. Um, you cannot, however, have it in the cloud. So if your photos are in Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that, they have to be moved um, to a desktop or to an external drive uh, in order to get it to work. Any other questions? As Matt, as um, y'all are thinking about questions, um, I am putting a link to where this recording is going to live and I will send you all the email and we'll also link to Maggie's presentation. Um, there is a, another webinar in this series for March coming up on Census 101. Uh, if anyone's interested in that in April, we're doing one on APA 7 and you uh, about the APA 7 changes. We also have another webinar coming up this week for our online learning and innovation series on creating self-scoring assessment using Qualtrics by Rob Owens, an instructional technology consultant. And uh, Maggie will be doing one um, next week as well on JSTOR tools for text analysis projects. So if you're interested in text analysis, Maggie will be doing that one. Uh, yeah. So I dropped both of those in the chat. You can sign up on both of those links. Uh, for either of those sessions. Um, Mark, so it, it looks like Tropy is saving the TPY files in my document, so you would probably need to um, retrieve those and put them on the drive with your photos, um, but potentially under help, uh, you would also be able to figure out where it's saving your, your data um, and put it all together on your drive. Any other questions? Thanks, Mark, for coming. Thank Thanks, you, Paul. everyone. And um, I'm going to close out of this. Maggie, thank you for hosting. Of course. And I'll see what? all of y'all soon. Bye. I'm hitting stop share, Sam. OK, great. Okay. And I'm going to X out of this, which should end it.